Hi, my name is Nick from the University of Bridgeport School of Chiropractic. Today I'm going to be talking about blood flow restriction training and how we can use it to increase muscular strength and hypertrophy and how we can use that in clinical practice. The research question that I want to answer is, can blood flow restriction training or BFR be a potent enough stimulus for muscular strength and hypertrophy in patients or populations that can't otherwise undergo a high load heavy tension resistance training program? This includes patients that are perioperative, either before or after surgery, older populations, or adaptive athletes. So what is BFR? What is blood flow restriction training? This is a type of strength training that we're using uh, cuffs or bands at the proximal joints of the extremities, the shoulder and hip, in order to enhance or increase a hypertrophic response. Typically, we use very low loads, about 30 to 50% of one rep max, and we do sets basically to failure, either very close to it or at absolute muscular failure. So why do we even want to increase muscular strength and hypertrophy? Well, uh, we've definitely seen that increases in fitness, increases in muscle size, and increases in muscle strength are all linked to better outcomes following surgery, enhanced sports performance, uh, increased longevity, and a whole range of benefits in system-wide illnesses from cardiovascular disease to neurological uh, degeneration. So how do we get this muscular hypertrophy? Well, there are three primary drives to uh, develop muscle size and strength. They are mechanical tension, that's lifting heavy weights basically, muscular damage that comes along with strength training of any kind really, and then metabolic stress. So what we want to do here is shift our focus over to metabolic stress when our patients or clients can't currently do a heavy tension high load resistance training program. Metabolic stress induces a hypertrophic response from increased muscle fiber recruitment, metabolic uh, or metabolite accumulation, acute muscle ischemia, and changes in hormones that signal for muscle protein synthesis through cellular swelling, uh, free radical production, and increase in certain muscular um, signaling growth factors. So this is exactly how blood flow restriction training works. We take advantage of that metabolic stress by partially occluding blood flow um, and keeping the blood in the muscle to really, really increase the metabolic stress on that tissue. So we get um, really, really good gains in hypertrophy and strength with less stress on the joints because we're using less weight. So how does this all stack up in the evidence? So when they compare high load resistance training to low load BFR, high load resistance training wins every single time in terms of brute strength, how much force you can produce, how much weight you can lift. And of course, if we're using low weights with the BFR group, you're never gonna develop that full, full muscular strength. So we wanna make sure that we get our patients back to a normal strength training program as soon as possible. In the interim, the hypertrophy gains seen with low load BFR are actually comparable to high load resistance training. So we can use that in the clinical setting when our patients can't yet undergo a high load resistance training program. Again, we talked about older populations. They can see hypertrophy in the lower extremities just by going on a walk with BFR cuffs on. Uh, patients that have just undergone a ACL reconstruction can go through uh, a rehab program with much less discomfort. We see that here in this randomized controlled trial after an ACL reconstruction. So we had 28 patients randomized either to a high load group or a low load BFR group. After eight weeks, the two groups had basically identical strength and hypertrophy gains, but the low load BFR group, because they're using much less weight, um, they actually had less knee joint pain, less knee joint effusion, and they scored better on all the subjective measures of physical activity following surgery. So we get similar results, but much less side effects I think that's a pretty big win in the post-surgery window. Some safety considerations that have come up like blood pressure spikes, uh, nerve compression signs, or increased risk of DVT have basically all been debunked by the literature. Blood flow restriction training seems to be safe as long as we apply uh, the cuffs properly, the pressure is not too high, uh, and if any of these negative um, side effects do occur, simply reducing the cuff gets rid of all of these signs. Uh, they're all pretty transient. Uh, so this is safe for basically everybody as long as we vet them that they are healthy to undergo uh, any strength training program really. So where does research go from here? Basically you want to be able to standardize things. The protocol that we use, the pressure that we inflate to, and also the training that professionals undergo so that they can do this safely with patients or clients. Uh, we want larger sample sizes for the RCTs and we want to keep exploring the safety considerations, see if there are any true contraindications, although this has been shown to be very safe. So here are all my references here. I've got quite a few. If you'd like to see any of those references up close, shoot me an email. Uh, my address is right here. I'd be happy to send over my references, the presentation as a whole, or if you just have any questions. Thank you very much for your time and consideration.